everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day and today I'm going to be talking about Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas. If you've seen my review for Throne of Glass, you know that I was a little lukewarm about it. I was kind of disappointed by it. But Crown of Midnight was so much better. It completely stepped things up. Crown of Midnight is just several levels above Throne of Glass and I'm just really, really impressed by how much better this installment was. It really fixed most of the flaws that I found in the first book, and it really opens up new sides of all the characters. In the first book, I didn't really connect with Selena's character, but I did like her a lot better in this book, although she's still not one of my favorites. And in the first book, I was underwhelmed by the plot, but this book was just, it was so exciting, I didn't want to put it down. If you like fantasy and magic in your books, then I would definitely give this series a go. And if you're not that impressed with Throne of Glass, I sincerely urge you to pick up Crown of Midnight and then decide whether you want to continue with the series, because this book is just infinitely times better than Throne of Glass. Now things are going to get spoilery, so if you haven't read Crown of Midnight, I will bid you farewell. Goodbye. Alright, so Crown of Midnight, let's go. The book opens up with Selena going on one of her assassination missions, and you see that she's taken up her job as the king's champion, but Selena's not actually killing people. She's kind of giving them an option, like, hey, I'm gonna give you this amount of time, and you can either fake your death and flee, or I could kill you now. And obviously people aren't going to choose their own death, so she's been just saving all of these victims. I had a few problems with Selena in the first book, but I liked her a lot better in Crown of Midnight. I can distinctly remember the point in this book where I was like, okay, Selena is actually a protagonist that I can root for. And it was the scene where Kaol is kidnapped by the rebel group, and she is so furious and determined. She's like, uh uh, they're messing with the wrong assassin here. And she just drops in and slices through all these men like they're made of paper and I was like yes yes that was the first moment when I actually saw how kick butt Selena is when she's riled up and determined she is very scary and that's exactly what I was expecting from her like when she slaughtered Grave tortured him and also when she killed Archer those are the moments, those are the moments that I have been waiting for in this series, considering it's a book about an assassin. I've been waiting for it, and I got it, and I'm so pleased. Selena and Kale's relationship really expanded a lot in this book. The first half of it is just all Kale selena romance, and I loved it, because I, I've said this before, I'll say it again, I'll say it a billion times in this review, I love Kale. I love Kaol so much. He is my favorite character in the series. I adore him. So when Kaol is happy, I'm happy. And actually, when I found myself disliking Selena in this book, it was usually when Selena was treating Kaol badly. Because really, there are just some scenes where Selena just treats Kaol really, really unfairly. And why? When Selena blames Kaol for Nehemia's death, and she just claws her nails into Kaol's skin. Oh my god, that hurt. That hurt me. And it was also completely unfair. It reminded me of Katniss in Mockingjay, how Katniss hates Gale and blames Gale for Prim's death, even though Gale had really nothing to do with Prim's death. Gale didn't kill Prim, and Kaol didn't kill Nehemia. So the fact that Kaol was just unjustly attacked and unfairly treated Oh, that was painful for me to read. Like when Kaol is in Selena's room and sh he finds her will and discovers that she's left all her money to him and Selena says, it would be too much trouble to bother changing it. At least now when the king sacks you for being so damn lousy at your job, you'll have something to fall back on. No! God, that was so mean! That was so mean! Oh my god, I felt so bad for Kale. And then he leaves and he finds a broom closet to solve it. Oh my god, Kale! No! I'm gonna go into this little Kale versus Dorian thing. I think I've made it pretty clear by now that I adore Kale. I love Kale. Kale. I find Dorian kind of annoying. Politically, Dorian was a lot stronger in this book. He showed so much growth when he finally spoke up against his father and was like, hey, could we not 
with those slave camps, they're kind of a terrible idea. I was like, yes, Dorian, that's fantastic. That's the Dorian that I can root for. But that's not all of Dorian. He's also a really mean and terrible friend. Whereas Kaol is like, okay, there's this line that I shouldn't cross with Selena because Dorian. Dorian is like, an awful part of him was glad that she'd cut out Kaol. You're right. That is awful. That is an awful thing to think. And then when Dorian tells Kale, do you know why I approached her at the Yolamis Ball? Not because I wanted her to dance, but because I saw the way you two were looking at each other. What? What kind of friend says that? What kind of friend does that? That's not what a friend does. And although Dorian does act like a great person sometimes, there are also times that make me want to punch him and stab him. And I don't like when he's such a crap friend. Kale. And because of those aspects of his character, he's just someone I can't root for. I said in my Throne of Glass review that I thought Dorian was Endgame, but after reading Crown of Midnight, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. I mean, I love Selena and Kale together, obviously, but then there was that time Selena was talking about Nehemia's death to Kale, and she's like, what happened that night? I don't know if I could ever forget it. Kind of like how Katniss will always associate bombs and... Prim's death with Gale. Like, the scar on Kale's cheek from when Selena attacked him, I feel like it kind of symbolizes the crack in Kale and Selena's relationship and how I don't know if it's ever going to heal. And that worries me! That worries me! Because I love Kale! Selena says to Dorian, I'll come back for you. But, you know, there's like underlying messages there. And then the next line is like, but still Dorian believed it. As if maybe she was saying false things? I don't know, I don't know. I mean, she says that to Dorian, but then to Kaol, she says, It's never made any difference to me when it came to you. I'd still pick you. I'll always pick you. And I just, I don't know, I don't know. Selena, what are you trying to say? The fact that Selena is Faye, and not just any Faye. Selena is Aelin Ashriver Galathenius. Galathinius, heir to the throne and rightful queen of Terrasen. Oh my god, I did not see that coming. And looking back on it, I should have. I should have seen it coming. I mean, yes, there have been just hints dropped in the first two books about how Selena's real name isn't Selena Sardothian. But I wasn't expecting her to be Faye, first off, or the lost heir to the throne of Terrasen. Oh my god. I shouldn't have been surprised, but I was, and I loved it. I am so thrilled to see what's going to happen in the next book, considering she's going straight into the Fey area. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just remembered in my Throne of Glass review, I'm talking about one of the reasons why I think Dorian is endgame is that Selena and Queen Elena have that, that blood bond and how they're just kind of connected in that way, and how Selena can only get stuff done if she becomes queen. So guess who she has to marry? Dorian. But no! She's already queen! She's already queen of the one land that has the ability to rival Otterlin, and she could, she could take down the king of Otterlin if she goes to Wendelin and makes, makes the right connections and does the right things, because she has that, and then she has Queen Elena and Nehemia behind her back, and of course she has Kaol and Dorian behind her back. Oh my god. Selena is so powerful now. Are we going to continue calling her Selena, or should we call her Aelin? Aelin? I don't know. Backtracking a little bit, I want to go back to Nehemia, because god, what an awesome character. I said in my Throne of Glass review that she's one of my favorite characters, and it's true. She still is. I mean, at first she kind of reminded me of a social justice blogger, and it was a little bit irritating, but I have learned just to completely embrace her character, because everything about Nehemia is so awesome. Nehemia just really brings out the best in everyone. She is so intelligent and knows exactly what to do. She brought out the best in Dorian, urging him to speak his mind about Calacalla and the council meetings. And she brings out the best in Selena, even though she kind of hurts her in the beginning when she calls her out, saying things like, Selena, you are so selfish, you only think of yourself. And then before Nehemia died, she was like, you are a coward. And they, those words, they hurt Selena and they anger her, but eventually those are the exact things to say to make Selena actually 
do something. Nehemia just accomplished so much even though she had to pay the price of her life. Just, can we talk about that for a minute? She sacrificed her own life for her people. She became a, a martyr for her cause. She knew she would be more effective in, in death than she would be alive and she willingly sacrificed herself so that she could spark the movement, finally spark the movement for her people. And God, that is so brave and admirable. Oh yeah, and she kind of ignited the magic in Dorian, didn't she? I mean, it was a really confusing scene. She like did something, she like made a mark or did a gesture to Dorian and then afterwards Dorian walked into the council meeting and he got really angry and then he discovered that he had magic. I don't really know what happened or what caused him to have that magic, but I think didn't Nehemia kind of ignite it? Isn't isn't she the spark in that? That's what I got out of it. But anyway, Dorian has magic now and I am so, so pumped to see how he explores it in the next books. Just so many fantastic things are set up for Air of Fire, which if we're talking about the title, by the way, Air of Fire, Selena said that her fey magic usually takes form of fire, so Air of Fire, I don't know. Throne of Glass kind of made sense. Crown of Midnight, I'm not really understanding the title Crown of Midnight. So Air of Fire, I'm not sure what to think. I really don't even have any predictions or expectations for the third book except for just awesomeness because Crown of Midnight was so good. I'm just really impressed with Crown of Midnight and I really liked it. I actually didn't realize how much I liked it until I just made this review because talking about it makes me realize how much I really, really enjoyed this book and how much development all the characters went through and how exciting the plot was. The plot was so much better than in Throne of Glass. I just, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing how the rest of the series goes. So please tell me what you thought of Crown of Midnight. I really want to know if you guys have any theories about Era Fire. And also I want to know if you guys prefer K.L. or Dorian because hello, K.L for me. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and happy reading. Goodbye!